So I got a couple things I wanted to talk about today and hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on. But one thing I wanted to circle back on real quick was the Unit EPC Classic. As we haven't discussed this in a long while, and I was curious to see what was going on with this project. Has there been any updates? Now, if you don't remember, this thing was first announced, I believe, in 2018. And it was kind of riding on the wave of all the mini Classic Edition consoles. You know, the hotness of all that stuff at the time. A fairly generic little mini PC that was going to play like, you know, 80s and 90s early PC games. They were working on licensing deals. Uh, I heard that they were doing something with like, they were going to get extra SD cards with licensed games on to sell. I'm sure they would have to jump through a lot of hurdles to do that. But yeah, not much news from this project. You had an update in 2019 and then... In 2021, on their Facebook page, they did post uh, another update. And this is the last thing we've heard from them. Now, I thought the idea was interesting. It's something we could easily do on plenty of other devices. And it's not like it was an official like product. It was just a company saying, hey, let's make a mini like 80s, 90s PC and kind of mimic that gaming experience. I just wanted to see where it would go. But yeah, in early 2021... They posted an update pretty much just saying like, hey, you know, there's a lot of people still joining the page and that they had to, you know, let people know, hey, we put this thing on hiatus late 2019 and it remains there in 2021. And as this is their last update, I'm sure it's still in that same status, right? Now, they do state that, you know, with the pandemic, it kind of messed things up. They have a very small team. They have a lot of projects that they're working on a lot of commitments, that kind of thing, right? And that they would hope that they can, um, you know, jump back into it at some point in the future. Uh, and that, you know, that would definitely be interesting to see. I'm not sure what kind of interest there would be in this thing with how generic it was. But yeah, I, I hope the best for these guys. And if this thing ever comes out or they post new updates, I'll definitely be following it. But yeah, if that's disappointing to you, okay. I, I mean... All right, we don't got the PC Classic, but we do have another home computer that looks to be coming out, and that is the Sharp X68000 Mini. So this company, Zwicky, uh, they announced this not too long ago, last month, and there's been a tr little trickle of information type of thing, and I thought this was really interesting. So the Sharp X68000 was a Japanese-only home computer that came out, I believe it was like 87, somewhere around there like mid to late 80s, and the chipset, everything that it used was fairly similar to, you know, arcade machines at the time, and even some arcade boards, like, used the same architecture type of thing, so as far as gaming at home, this thing was a beast at the time, right, and seeing that they're going to be putting out a mini, I, I think is pretty interesting, and this company, you may be like, who the hell are these guys, right, and, and we'll, uh, <clears throat> And we'll jump into that in a second, as there's, you know, some interesting things that they've worked on that some of you guys may actually own. But yeah, so this thing was announced, a little keyboard, mouse, and then in the back you could, you could see the, uh, the original style X68000. Um, and then in another picture I saw where, boom, it's got a handle type of thing like the original. That looks neat. I, I mean, the little thing at the bottom, all the Japanese text down there, that's not like any additional information. I, I, I used my uh, phone to translate that because I was like, whoa, does that say something interesting? It's just like copyright information. Uh, Sharp owns this type of thing, right? But yeah, I mean, that looks cool. A little mini PC that was, you know, of Japanese origin, right? So I, I'm going to take a look with you guys at some of the games that were on this thing because I know a lot of us in the retro gaming community we're aware of that device. Most of us have never owned one. Some of us may have uh, emulated the games. I haven't emulated them too much, like, that I could really recall. So I had to dig into it a little more. But I, I know a lot of us are aware of it. And, hey, it's part of gaming history, right? So this company, uh, Zawiki, they've worked on a lot of stuff here. So, like, they have this Go Train uh, controller for the Nintendo Switch, right? That's one thing they've done. Oh, and they also were involved in the development of the Egret 2 Mini, right? Released on March 2nd by Taito. And also the Astro City Mini. They co cooperated with Sega Toys and contributed to the speedy product development and mass production with a total solution consisting of software, hardware, and mechanics. Uh, this is all like, 
you know, Google Translate. So who knows how, uh, how that stuff's actually worded. But yeah, you know, these guys have worked on a lot of interesting things. The Game Gear Micro, Mega Drive Mini, PC Engine Mini. So these, these guys, they, they kind of know what's up. You know, a lot of these devices I really liked. The Game Gear Micro was kind of a novelty. And, you know, like the Game Gear Micro and some of these other items that were essentially Japan only, obviously the X68000 is going to remain a, a Japan only thing. It wasn't released anywhere else, so why would they sell it anywhere else? But my thought with that was, is like, hey, a lot of us, we've been importing all, all sorts of stuff from Amazon Japan, Play Asia, different import sites to get our hands on some of this stuff that's not being released here. Or maybe like the Astro City Mini where later on it's released through like limited run games and all it is is a sticker, you know, slapped to the box. And it's the same damn device, the same packaging, everything that was available in Japan. But you're paying a premium for that sticker, right? So I, I was curious, man. I if I if this thing goes up for pre-order and um you know I'm I'm interested in getting it, is it gonna be something like where the Mega Drive Mini 2, where a lot of those games I'm not gonna be able to enjoy if I get it from Japan? Uh is it gonna be the same thing? So who knows what games will be included, but I went to this little fan wiki that has a bunch of the Sharp X68000 games listed and shown, and I kinda wanted to look through and see like, you know, what potentially could come on this thing. Is it going to be a lot of arcade games where we don't have to worry about the Japanese language for the most part? And, you know, with this device, you know, it even says here, this thing had specs near identical to arcade hardware of the time. Capcom actually used these to program CPS1 games. So a lot of stuff here was arcade perfect or very near arcade perfect, apparently. So you had stuff like Castlevania, um, Atomic Robo Kid. Blue Wings, Chilren Shah, I'm not sure what that one is. Ghouls and Ghosts, right? Uh, the X68000 had the advantage of powerful, powerful hardware, near identical to the CPS board, so it's no wonder this is the most faithful to the arcade. It even has difficulty dip switches, which go up to 11. Stuff like that would be awesome to have on this device, man. So what else did we have? Twin B, Dragon Spirit, Fantasy Zone, Final Fight... And I've watched video footage of that. I'm like, yeah, that, that, hey, that looks like arcade perfect to me, right? Uh, Gradius, Granada. The list goes on and on here of awesome ass games. Parodius Da. What? <laughs> Rygar. This would be awesome, man. If this thing does come to fruition like it looks like it may, and they have a lot of these awesome arcade games on it, I mean, to me, it's going to, like, as long as it's not, like, a bunch of role-playing games in Japan. I'm not sure if there were very many role-playing games on this thing. I'm sure there were, like, probably a bunch of dating sims and, and you know, role-playing game type stuff. If, if it's text-heavy games, a lot of that, then I'm going to have to pass. But if it's mostly arcade stuff, like, I'm going to be all in it. You know what I mean? Like, th just looking at this little list of games here, if they included just a few of these, that would be pretty cool. But yeah, we don't know for sure when this thing's going to come out, what the games are going to be on it when it comes out. But yeah, it's mini gaming news, and it's something I, I, I do uh, you know, get kind of excited about at times. I like talking about I like messing with these types of things. And this one for me is going to be a, a, a wait and see. I'm intrigued. I'm going to keep tabs on the news on this, you know what I mean? And, and see if it's going to be a worthwhile addition to all the mini classic consoles that I already have. You know, some of them do collect dust, but a handful of them I play quite often. Like the Super Nintendo Mini, I play a lot. The Turbo Graphics Mini, the Genesis Mini. The one that I really, like, man, I, we'll talk more about s some other thoughts I had in the future. It's going to talk about the Neo Geo, but we'll save that for another time. But yeah, there's, there's ones I still play and enjoy. And yeah, this could be one of them. We'll have to wait and see. Appreciate you guys. Let me know what you think down below. Bye.